Space is always at a premium in my garden. The space is only about 15 by 20 feet wide and I grow in raised beds with wide uh, paths in between them. So I've been trying to grow in containers as much as I can. And this year I tried growing kohlrabi in uh, containers. Did it work? I've never grown kohlrabi before, so this is a first for me this year. And I grew about six in containers, and one, I had an extra plant, so I planted it in the garden. So the one in the garden's doing okay. It's almost uh, time to harvest it. But I wanted to see if I could actually grow it in a container. And my container is actually a coffee can, a plastic coffee can. They have a three pound size, and it looked like it had enough space for roots and a plant to grow, particularly since the kohlrabi bulb grows above the ground, not in the ground. I thought it uh, could work. Let's see how it did. The kohlrabi was planted all in the same containers, same size containers. They all got the exact same soil. They had the exact same amendments in it, basically blood meal and bone meal. They all got the same... Uh, nutritional care afterwards. I would uh, water once a week with a uh, fish emulsion, the 511 uh, fish emulsion, and uh, the 01010 Morbloom uh, fertilizer. So they all got the same uh, fertilizer schedule, all, all growing in the same location. And yet we got wildly different results. On this end, we got this one here, which is probably the largest one of the uh, bunch. And then they start getting a little progressively smaller as we go down. Now these right here are probably all ready to be harvested. They say somewhere between two inches and four inches in diameter is a good uh, time to harvest them. So they're probably all in that range. But the last two, again, all grown in the same spot. This one only recently started forming a bulb. And this one has yet to form a bulb. And I think if you compare it to the one that's planted in the garden, the one in the garden is actually much larger, even though it also was planted at the same time and got the same fertilizer regimen. So I'm going to say it looks like you can grow them in a container, but it could be being able to spread out their roots and pull up whatever nutrients they can from the ground itself just might sustain them better. But if you're short on space, growing them in containers is a possibility. And as I said, I've never grown kohlrabi before. I've never even eaten kohlrabi before, so I don't know what to expect. But it was one of those vegetables that a lot of gardeners seem to grow. So I was like, I need to grow that too. So I'm gonna harvest these four here and the one in the garden, and let's see what we got. When I harvest plants, I do like to leave their roots in the ground to continue feeding the soil as they decompose. So that's what I'm gonna do here. If I can, I'm gonna cut off some of the lower leaves around it. I understand the leaves are also edible but I'm going to feed these to my chickens. Jeez. I see those gardeners on TV with their knives just cutting them off, but I got my clippers, I'm going to use them. So just cut off all these lower leaves. I think you just leave a few leaves on top for storage. And what I read was they'll keep in the refrigerator for a couple of weeks. So I guess we'll just take these big leaves off and we'll leave those on top like that. Looks like it was maybe being attacked by some slugs at some time 
and it does look like it might have split from watering. So we'll have to see what it looks like when I cut it open inside. But otherwise, a decent looking, whoa, <laughs> that's been hollowed out. I'm not sure whether this is actually going to be any good to eat. So again, we'll see what happens when I end up cutting this open. Let's go harvest the others. So just as I did with the in-ground one, I'll start off cutting off these lower leaves just to make it easier to get to the roots to cut it off. It's got a relatively small stem, and there it is. Yeah, I'll take off that one. So this one doesn't have the same kind of damage on it that the other did, and that's probably because it's raised up, and the slugs might not have been able to get to it. But size difference. As you can see, this is one of the bigger ones of the one in the uh, pots. And it's about half the size of the one that's in the ground. Let's get the others. Now I'm thinking part of the reason the uh, growth might not have been as substantial is that because this was grown on my uh, deck that's underneath a uh, my uh, grape uh, vine pergola so if you haven't seen my video about my grapes I'll link to it up here this one grew pretty close to the ground So as I said, this was about the same size as the other one. A little bit smaller, and they get progressively smaller from here. And about half the size of the in-ground grown one. Now if you see some white uh, speckles on the leaves and stuff, that's not a fungus or anything like that. That's actually the Bordeaux mixture that I spray on my grapes. It's perfectly fine to uh, spray it on vegetables as well. And uh, so I actually don't spray it onto these. It just catches the overspray. And the Bordeaux mixture is to uh, prevent uh, funguses uh, from spreading on the grapes. And so it can't hurt with this. Probably have more of a concern about uh, the cabbage leaves since these are brassicas as well uh, the cabbage leaf moth um, cabbage leaf moth cabbage moth the little white moth that flutters around your garden could attack it but it really doesn't seem like it has at all so I'm wondering and I might try it again in the fall uh, plant some in another month or so uh, this is uh, the middle of June right now I live in uh, zone 7A in northeastern New Jersey. So I might try and grow these again in containers, and uh, but this time put them in a much sunnier location and see if that helps. Because that one in the garden did get full sun for most of the day. These were shaded for a part of the day, so more so than perhaps growing in a container, the shade might have uh, inhibited their growth. And this is the last one I'll be harvesting today the smallest of the four five depending on how you look at it this is it in relation to the uh, first one I harvested harvested out of the container so it's about two thirds the size of this one, I'd say. And much smaller than the in-ground one. But again, between two and four inches, this is probably getting close to the max that you'd 
probably want the size to get according to what I've read. Although I don't know, I see online and I see, you know, people getting some really big ones. But from what I've read, they get kind of woody when they start getting that large. That these are still uh, soft. I guess particularly this size, the smaller one, they'll still be tender to eat. So I'm going to look up some recipes on how to cook these up. I'm interested in seeing if I even like them. That'll determine whether or not I grow any in the fall. But otherwise, not a bad little harvest. It was, as I said, because I'm space constrained and uh, I've been trying to grow more in containers. I, I grow uh, lettuce in containers and that does really, really well. I grow uh, black seeded Simpson and that's now my uh, new favorite uh, lettuce. Here you go, this is my lettuce. It's on its last stand. I'm probably gonna do one more harvest out of this. You can see it's uh, flagging. These are just uh, like small uh, bus buckets. Uh, I grow six plants in each one. It might be slightly crowded, but it's worked well. Each week I just come along and harvest uh, leaves off of it. The leaves are very tender and really good to eat. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.